Hey, this is Corey, and you're listening to The Read, a Substack on a different kind of podcast company. We want 50 clients, 50 great clients, no more, no less. I once interviewed Lex Friedman. Now Google, that's not a typo. Lex is a super genius who, among other things, worked for a podcast ad firm called Midroll Media. In the funky early days of podcasting, Midroll brought a fresh approach to advertising that somehow made ads the second coolest part of podcasts. Then, you know, Midroll was acquired and shitified and converted into another SXM media property. Lex makes puzzles now. And podcast ad revenue is in the toilet. I found, though, talking to Lex yielded one valuable insight. Turns out, there were actually at least two. Our company only works with 50 active clients at a time. This is a cap, in place largely inspired by that conversation with Lex. You can find it if you want to go to the Substack. Uh, There's a link over to that podcast episode from way back when. He mentioned at that time that Midroll only worked with 200 clients. As a budding podcast production company in what was then an era of scale at all costs, this seemed counterintuitive. I like counterintuitive business decisions. Servicing only that number of accounts meant the team could be right-sized beforehand. They were able to focus on attracting higher paying quality clients rather than cramming more and more accounts into the CRM. It was a box and they could only fit so many things in it. This made the decisions on what to put in that box very clear. Growth at great costs. Though I liked this idea, I I neglected to act on it. Around that time, Podfly had up to 150 active shows and as many as 50 team members. Look, I've run service companies of this size before. In a previous position, I, I managed operations for four physical locations in two countries with 130 employees. I knew how to manage large, hybrid, multilingual teams. I also helped scale and sell an online radio and podcast network. Scaling, managing, and exiting was my jam. Yet Podfly, for some reason, was becoming an organizational headache. Process over people was the focus. And worse, employing, (laughs) here we go, middle managers became necessary. Rather than improving the service, we were improving the internal processes. Revenues grew and profits shrank. Sure, it felt validating in the elevator at podcast conferences to compare company sizes. Mine's bigger than yours. It was also infantile and ultimately irresponsible. Eventually, growth comes at the expense of quality, especially in the service industry. Team members are soon treated like employees, and everything has to fit into a spreadsheet on which quarterly decisions that affect real human lives are made. Look. I get it. That's how big companies are run. I know because I've worked at or in them. I mocked them as big, bloated, and pointless. Granted, 20 people in cafes around the world can't make an iPhone, but that's not who I wanted to become. It was time to pull back. New org chart, new mandate. We recently went through significant leadership changes at Podfly. I put a qualified creative director in my place and stepped into the CEO role. It admittedly sounds more impressive than it is. However, the title meant that my job description was clear, and what I did next was easy. I laid out a new accounts mandate for the company. Podfly will only service 50 active accounts at any given time. Look, I spent three months working with our new fractional CFO to generate a rundown, a la the office, <laughs> of our clients. We established that we had 85 active accounts at that time. 
only half of them were actually profitable and the rest were breaking even or even losing money. So the intuitive response might be one, raise prices, two, cut staff, and three, acquire more clients. Well, we did the opposite on all counts. Our first mission was to shed 41% of our 85 clients. That was a fairly easy prospect from a numbers perspective. You know, a couple emails, a nice blurb about how we value you and it's done, right? Well, remember, we don't operate a service business hiding behind some laptop screen and an email. We talk to our clients and team members. We shared the situation account by account and asked what everyone thought we could do. Clients and team members were, well, they were surprised. They weren't accustomed to being treated like reasonable people in an economic downturn. Yes, there's also universally an unspoken downturn in podcast revenues. What we did next, I'm told, is unheard of. Any account that didn't fit into our 50 client mandate had to go. As humans, we couldn't simply fire clients and stiff the production teams who earned a living on the shows. I mean, look, pardon my French, but that would be a total dick move, and we're not dicks. I'm looking at you, Rogers Media. That's the kind of lazy teenage breakup that adds just more yuck to an already unyummy media landscape. Instead, we offered the shows to the teams. We were able to, one, lower the prices for the clients because we don't need a cut anymore. Two, retain the staff on the accounts. These clients already had working relationships. And three, offboard the clients from our roster kindly and responsibly. It was the exact opposite and everyone loved it. This activity has built a clearly defined box where we can put our work. We can select projects that will go in and which go out. We learned to take projects out of the box with gratitude and respect. We can shepherd projects to relationships where they continue to thrive in what may be a better, more cost-effective fit. You may recall the second lesson I didn't take from Lex. Midroll got acquired and eventually added to another media Borg. I promise you that spreadsheets and a handful of middle managers, mostly those infantile men measuring in elevators, are in charge. At one point, I foolishly thought, man, wouldn't it be great if Podfly were acquired too? Put a couple million in the bank, get a blurb and some press release and the short-lived envy of my colleagues. Seriously, I I put energy into this idea, knowing it would likely end up screwing a lot of people. I, I even hired a consultant to show me how it's done. Gimlet, Pacific Content, Parcast, and dozens more are gone, or shadows of their former selves. Bought, sold, misunderstood, kicked around, and eventually not worth keeping or even trying to sell off. And that's just the company, those sensitive, talented artists who worked in good faith on projects were treated like 90s radio disc jockeys in disposable cups. I know, because we hired many of those people. Sure, we got our acquisition offers at the the height of the, you know, zero interest SBA loans that were going around but we didn't take them. To be honest, in hindsight, only because the money wasn't, you know, life-changing enough. (laughs) Thank goodness. I know better now. I was caught up in it, and I'm glad we dodged that bullet. So, now what? As I work more on the other side of the pandemic, having read inspired works such as 4,000 Weeks, Company of One and the Boutique, I realize I've always wanted what we're already moving toward. An employee-owned company. Kind, 
sustainable, fair, professional, and most importantly, enjoyable. We build together, we share rewards, we, we embrace values, and we have ambitions beyond ourselves. Finalizing the 50 client mandate and thinking kind of bottom up about how we provide fair work for producers rather than accounts for Podfly, I see this agency becoming what it started out as, a collective creative community collaborating with brands that we like. Now, on to killing those pesky slide decks and contracts that no one reads. Hey, thanks again for the hang. I really do appreciate it. We're getting a lot of readers and listeners, which is kind of awesome. So we'll keep doing this if you keep coming. If you want to hear more about, you know, kind of what we're doing at Podfly, you can go to podfly.net. Um, or you can just go tend your garden because if you don't have your tomatoes in by now, it's, it's too late.